Many times you guys have asked for a solo player version of the Frustrator, a small base using trapped loot rooms accessible through shoots. Well, here it is, the Mini Frustrator. It features a TC tucked away in the safest corner where it's protected from at least 16 rockets, two loot rooms with six boxes each, which are reached by drop-down shoots and are guarded by undrainable traps, and a nice open main living area with all the items you need, including space for a tier 3 workbench. With a cost of about 15k stone, 4.5k metal frags and 71 high qual, the base is about half the cost of the aggravator, the smallest frustrator-like design on my channel so far. The upkeep of 2.5k stone, 1.5k metal fragments and 12 high qual is easy to handle, even for a solo player. The cheapest way we found to raid both loot rooms and the TC is 26 rockets, assuming that the traps are completely ineffective, which is a fantastic cost to protection ratio. We enter the base through one of my standard airlock designs. Above this door we find drop chests and a shotgun trap to welcome door raiders. Behind the garage door we find the main living space. Through efficient use of the honeycomb for items, the main living space remains spacious. The chute leads to one of the main loot rooms which is guarded with undrainable traps. The other chute leads to the other main loot room, which also provides access to the TC. Let's jump into the build. The base requires several blueprints to be effective. Thus, I would recommend building it from a starter and to wait with the build until you got reinforced glass windows and shotgun traps. Ideally, you also manage to obtain garage doors, ladders and metal embrasures. First, let's claim the area and construct the starter unit. Place the TC into a triangle and close it off with a reinforced glass window. The square next to it will be the first main loot room. Use it for temporary items while you extend the base. Add two more triangles and another square. Keep the single door frame wood so later you can hatchet it out. Square can house more starter base items such as the level 1 workbench. To build the first main loot room, upgrade the floor and the wall frame to sheet metal. We're going to use the 7 box loot room technique. Start with the box in the back. If you have trouble with the placement, watch my tutorial video on hyper efficient loot room designs. Place two shotgun traps, one on each side. Then place the half height triangle for the upper boxes. We leave out the last box so we can have another shotgun trap here in the back. Next we're going to add the lower level honeycomb. Start by upgrading the foundation of the TC compartment to armored. Then place a metal square foundation in front of it and add U-shaped stairs on top of it like this. Place triangle foundations all around the base and then floor tiles above each of them.
fill in the walls except for in front of the wooden door and next to the stairs. To get on top of the base more easily, place a raised square foundation and foundation steps in front of the U-shaped stairs. Jump onto the second floor and place walls all around the outer perimeter. Only on this side of the U-shaped stairs, place double doors and a window. Close off the ceiling. Destroy the wooden door frame and place the outer wall. Place a twig floor tile at half height, then replace the full wall. Let's head back upstairs. Three furnaces go into this triangle. The tier 2 workbench on the opposite side. And these two triangles can be used for either three lockers or another loot room. Close all the items off with window frames and if possible with embrasures. Overnight you can seal them off with reinforced glass windows. Move your sleeping bags into the center of the main living space. Now let's create the second loot room. Remove all items. Upgrade the foundation and the wall frame to sheet metal. Then, place the four lower boxes as before, but mirrored. As before, add two shotgun traps to the side. Two more boxes onto a half high triangle and a third shotgun trap in the back. Close off the room with a garage door. Now let's complete the shoots. This wall will separate the two loot rooms, upgraded to sheet metal. Fill in half height floor tiles. Use ladders to get out of the loot rooms. On the bottom of the chutes, I'd put the main sleeping bags. Some of you have trouble with these half eye triangles. I put them in because they allow to place more items and because they limit the angles that raiders can get with their explosives. If you have trouble jumping out of those chutes, try to crouch jump or open console and type input.autocrouch true. Use the main living space for more items. The research table can go next to the exit. Keep the opposite side free in case you manage to obtain a tier 3 workbench. Use the space above the chutes to place more items such as the repair bench or boxes. To complete the airlock, upgrade the square foundation to sheet metal. Add a sheet metal roof with two sheet walls on the side and close the triangle off with stone walls. Then
then build a standard airlock onto the outer square foundation. Close off the rear square with two layers of ceilings. On the top of the lower ceiling, place two drop chests and a shotgun trap. The base is now complete. All that is missing is to upgrade the core to increase the base's durability. Upgrade the floor tiles above the main loot room to armored. And the ceiling above the core to sheet metal. Upgrade all walls and foundations around the main loot rooms and the chutes to sheet metal. Upgrade the back of the TC compartment to armored. To limit the effectiveness of splash damage, compartmentalize the main living space with two garage doors. The last bit that needs more protection against splash damage is the rear of the chutes. Run outside and place two more foundations. Then place two full walls in their center and upgrade them to sheet metal. Cover them up with stone walls if you like, but I'm going to leave them open. Don't hesitate to place barricades around the airlock to make door camping more difficult. And voila, the mini frustrator. As always, feel encouraged to make the base your own and add what you need, such as external turrets, electricity or a shooting floor. May the base bring you safely through the wipe until then, Evil Wurst, out.